loading up a Jeep. This truck has no turning radius. We're loading up the Jeep. Taking it to the shop. Getting some repairs done for the wheeling trip. Probably gonna have to jump it off. I don't drive it a lot. Used to be my daily. But I was tearing shit up, driving it on a daily basis because it's just too big for it now. I really need a backup camera. Get to this trailer. Let's do this. Uh oh. Let's see where we're at. Damn. I'm way off. Let's try this again. So I need to go up to the side about six inches to the right and then back. Fire. Motherfucker! I can deal with that. We're gonna get her ready because we got a wheeling trip to go to. Let's get it. Last time we went out, we went to uh, Turkey Bay up in uh, Kentucky, and last trail we went down, of course, uh, this front passenger wheel going on a down slope got stuck up against a tree root, so I popped it in reverse, backed up a little bit. Because of the angle I was at, I was just going to try to bump over it and popped it back in drive and I kind of bumped the gas. When I bumped the gas, that passenger front just locked against it and yanked super hard. I was like, oh shit. Uh, so I backed up and got away from it a little bit and continued on. And finally, when I got straight, my wheel, instead of being centered was completely like this so i hyper extended the gearbox and the uh, power steering pump started boiling fluid out at that point so she's a little noisy right now power steering pump wise so i'm gonna have to fix that before we go and i got some hood vents hood louvers whatever you want to call them for uh, heat distribution for 
this 4-0 because they're really bad about it. And bitch. Yeah. Golly. Yeah, she just squirting out. It's all over the lower tie rod. Drag link. Drag bar. I got some work to do. That's part of it. Again, that's why she's not a daily. So, I can go wheeling and not worry about it. Not breaking down or breaking something. All I gotta worry about is getting to the trailer. Get her snug. I just hate that I have to trailer it to the shop instead of drive it to the shop. But it's probably smarter if I do trailer it because if I don't get it done today. I can leave it at the shop and so I won't tie that down yet. I need to get the rear going. But if I can't get it done today, I can leave it at the shop and work on it throughout the work week little by little. I don't have too much to do to it, but hopefully I can get most of it done. The important stuff done for the wheeling trip. God, you rusty thing, I need some WD-40. That's right. Always carry around that can of WD. Keep that thing on me. See that right there? Mm-hmm. Spray down in there right there. Mm-hmm. Get that air, get that air. Should be good. Kind of work her a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Much smoother. Hey, watch this. Woo hoo hoo! That's right. WD 40. If you didn't know, WD and WD 40 stands for Water Displacement Trial 40. That's right. Learn something new every day, folks. Shit fire. Made it to the shop. Oh, I'm about to pull her in. Get her tore apart. I'm tired. But I gotta do this so I can go wheeling. She is in the air, folks. I have not washed it since the last time I went out. Got a lot of stuff to look at. Go over that but we're gonna see what we can do i put these uh dirty life 17 hb locks on there with some 37s uh haven't been off road with them literally just got them on but i got some trimming to do for those i'm gonna assess let me turn on the flash so you can see so hyper extended the steering last time I was out so this gearbox that I just replaced I'm gonna have to pull back out and good thing it's under warranty lifetime warranty so I'll be able to fix that and then I'm gonna do power steering pump up at the top and then also I got the excuse the mess I got some hood lovers for heat distribution in that tiny little engine bay these four O's and Cherokees are known to overheat quite a bit but yeah man I'm not in the mood for this but I gotta do it so I can go wheeling I've been working on everybody else's shit so now, it's time to get my shit ready. 
Let's get it. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun to take off. Wow. You need the man with the big muscles, big muscles to get it all done, yes. <laughs> Wait, what do I have? I don't know. <laughs> For those of you, this is Dubo, everybody. Good friend of mine. Don't mess up your audio. No. Known him for years. He needed an impact. Press in a ball joint. And you know who we called? Who'd you call, Dubo? Few people but you only one answered <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you that know me surprising that i answered <laughs> but i've been i've been working on that for everybody that knows me anyways man you're still in some better days holy shit Let's pull it off. I need a hammer. Oh, you know, just pieces of fucking mud and rock coming off as I'm hitting it. Need my bear gun. Oh yeah, baby. Fucker. All right, wait a minute. For those of you that don't know, this is a pitman arm. Okay, your steering rod connects to the pitman arm. Steering rod goes down to the knuckle. And then from that knuckle to this knuckle, you got a tie rod. I'm taking off the pitman arm because it's connected to the gearbox. And the new gearbox doesn't come with the pitman arm. So we're taking it off. And it's being a bitch. Whoa! Got it. <laughs> There you go, folks. Safety glasses. Always. I'm not wearing them. Don't be like me. To the side. Now, this gearbox that I'm using is actually for a uh, Durango, which is a direct bolt-on upgrade for the Cherokee, because this gearbox is for a bigger sized motor. So now, I got three bolts, four bolts, I can't remember. Yeah, four bolts that I got on this side to take off. No, three. Three or four. But take these bolts off, and then I got to undo the steering arm, steering column, steering whatever you want to fucking call it. Got a nut right here. I don't know if y'all can see it. That's it. Drugs are bad, okay? But, I got a nut on my steering arm. I gotta take off. Usually, best bet to lock down the steering wheel is just use your seat belt to knock 
make it straight in this case I don't care I'll worry about that when I go back together but I'm gonna get that off bolts holding the gearbox to the unibody pull it down and then I'll undo the power steering lines and then from there we'll drop it down and I'll start disassembling the power steering pump even a drop what I'm proud of myself for that one but now I can get this line off the fucking gearbox that was seized up looks like one of these lines was already leaking it's a good thing I'm replacing them Cleaning up this fucking mess that I have. All right, trip to the auto parts store. Back from the auto parts store, O'Reilly's only. I do not mess with anybody else. I'll add that in there. Uh, new gearbox out of a '98 Snowplow Edition Durango, which that was already in it before. But when I did that before, I did not swap uh, the power steering pump. And I'm doing the WJ uh, Grand Cherokee swap over, which all I have to do is swap the pulley over from the Cherokee to the Grand Cherokee one, and also the uh, pressure hose fitting as well. But got new lines, new pump, new gearbox, and ATF fluid. This should fix a lot of my issue with uh, the pump overheating and boiling fluid out and also be able to power this uh, bigger gearbox, beefier gearbox. But the Durango gearbox is direct bolt-on and then like I said the power steering pump is also a direct bolt-on but you do have to swap over the pulley and the pressure hose fitting to fit and then these are power steering hoses that go to the Cherokee and I'm pretty sure I might have to drill out one of them to a bigger bore not sure yet we'll get to that point sooner or later but yeah let's get the show on the road also I want to add the reason why I am upgrading my steering components is bigger tire size bigger wheel size more strain on the steering components and also strain on the steering system upgrading is very ideal with the extra tire size extra wheel size and in doing so it should perform a lot better when i'm off-road and not strain as bad so there you have it step stool because I'm short first things first we got to loosen 
the serpentine belt and on these four O's inside the Cherokees and Comanches and some Grand Cherokees uh, the tensioner is here so we'll loosen this bolt and also the pulley bolt down there right there if you can tell what I'm pointing at but we're gonna loosen these and then we'll slot it to loosen the serpentine belt pull the serpentine belt off and then to get to these bolts to take the pump off we'll rotate the pulley to the pump to each hole where that from that hole to line it up with each bolt undo it take the pump off now I'll probably leave these lines on no I'll probably go ahead and take them off but once I get the pump undone we'll have it off take the pulley off swap it to the new one and go from there I do not have a siphoning pump thing to get the uh, reservoir empty so I'll have to deal with that but here we are so if I can remember correctly the tensioner bolts should be 9 16 <laughs> these fancy cornwell rationing wrenches which are awesome it's got a 13 on this side and 15 on this side i got the whole set because uh good tools make a faster job so i'm gonna get this loose Tension of pulley is loose. Now we'll loosen the tensioner. And as I'm loosening, the pulley is actually dropping away from the serpentine belt to allow play in it where it can be removed. Serpentine belt. Yeah. Alright, all I'm going to do with the serpentine belt is just kind of slide it out of the way. And I am probably going to remove the condenser fan just to create more room to work in. You don't have to do this if you want to work around it. Me, I don't want to fucking fight with it, so. I'm removing it. And luckily, I did a replacement on this condenser fan not too long ago. And all I used were the top bolts to hold it in place. Well, I'll say that, but now I remember that it only has two bolts on it because it slides into slots. I was going to make a joke out of that about weight reduction, but that's how my fucking jokes go. So, me, I would go ahead and remove the condenser fan. Get it out of your way so you're not fighting with it. It's no big deal. You saw how easy that was. Now, I can freely get to the pump. And go from there so the tensioner will have to be removed and then the bolts back here to the pump will have to be removed as well what did I do with my wrench there it is look at there looky there Shit fire! It landed in the old drain uh, can thing. It, it, it hit the ground, alright? It didn't get stuck. That was a good. Always listen for the noise of it hitting the ground when you go to drop a bolt. If you don't hear that noise, then uh, good luck. So now we're getting my deep oil socket. Get to that bottom bolt, the bracket, 
for the tension. I'm sorry for the camera angle. I'm limited on what I can actually do with that since I'm still recording with my phone. God dang it, I've dropped that one too. Shit! But it hit the ground. Alright. Spin the pulley like I said. And I'm not sure if these are the same size. No, definitely not. It looks like it's a 13 this time. swap over our pulley and our fitting to the new pump just so y'all can see a little bit from my angle so I took this bolt and that bottom bolt loose for the uh, tensioner bracket because our power steering bolts go through this part of that bracket and then thread in here but I took those loose so I do have some wiggle room. There's one more bolt on this bracket that runs from this part of the bracket to the side of the block at the bottom. 
but I just took those two loose so I do have some wiggle room and then took these three off so I can slide the pump out so now I'm gonna go in reverse when I go to put it back together uh, I'll do the pump first and then I'll raise the Jeep up again and put the gearbox on reason being it's easier to get the lines on the gearbox without it bolted up so in the six years that I've owned this Jeep I've never replaced the pump I've only replaced the gearbox never replaced the lines so it's definitely due time because I'm not sure it's, if it's ever been replaced so let's get pulley off and this is the fitting that we're gonna have to get off or yeah this fitting right here is gonna be the one that we take off the new pump as you can see is a lot bigger I don't know if you can see that with the reflection on it. Let's, let's open. This new pump is a lot bigger reservoir than the old one. And it has a higher pressure output for this bigger gearbox that I'm going to be putting on. This is our pulley puller. I got it at O'Reilly's. I went ahead and bought one. So I had it a while back because of my job. Got a little loose in there. Somewhere. And what this does right here is a lip. I don't know if you can tell with all the crud on it, but right here there's a lip that these will go around. I'll we'll put those around. Better fit on. Looks like I need to loosen this up a little bit more. Like so. Makes this job a hell of a lot easier. Snug it, and then I'm gonna have a wrench on this part of it holding it while I tighten it down. This is my line going in, and then there's a fitting that goes on to the pump that I will have to take off and add to the other one along with the pulley off this one. We have now removed the fitting. What I do with it? That will be swapped over to the new pump and also the pulley. Your old pump will have a core on it, so I will be returning this to get my core back. Reuse your old cap. All right, so building our new pump. There is an o-ring that comes on this fitting i am going to replace it with one of the assortment on my kit that i have in my toolbox because why not it's already out so we'll go ahead and replace it because that's one less thing to worry about i'm just going to take me a little pick Try that little guy off without poking myself. Mm. There's the old one. I don't want to 
to compare with the ones I have. See if I can get an exact match. All right, I'm not proud of this, but the size of this fitting is a little bit bigger than an inch. And my neck size up that I have is an inch and one sixteenth. And I don't have a 26 millimeter either. So I had to literally tap an inch socket onto it, which is not recommended. And I hate that I had to do it, but it should work. All right, we got the old one out, it's now stuck in my socket. finger hurts because I poked myself and I'm taking this old one off new one is on I'm just tighten this one down Snug. Boop. All right. Let's put the pulley on. Set her back down. All right. Literally, all I'm gonna do is to put the pulley back on. Just give her a couple taps. So all I'm gonna do now to get the pulley on. Give her a couple taps, get her started evenly. And then push her back on. So in my same kit that I used to pull the pulley off, there's also a piece to put the pulley on. Inside your little bearing rod thing I don't know exactly what you call it I'm not book smart I'm experienced uh, there is threads inside of that shaft this bolt will thread into that shaft and then this new fitting threads onto this bolt as I tighten this down it's going to press the uh, pulley back on tighten this or loosen it sorry about that had to clear up some storage in my phone and didn't catch it in time to uh, show you that install and whatever anyways old pulley on new pump fitting off old pump to new pump let's get this thing installed I forgot to show you guys this is the universal exterior power steering cooler small little guy but she does the job so we're gonna get her installed too when running my cooler my exterior cooler for the power steering I want it out of the way but also somewhere where it's gonna be in way of air coming in and if I put it on this side remember my condenser fan sits here and I don't want like yeah it would be good to have it in front of the fan here but 
what if this was to come off it's going to hit the fan and that's not going to be good so luckily for me my grill's already messed up so i can place it right there in the dead center and then run my lines up to it that's where i'm mounting it all right i got my cooler set up which is awesome um I only pay 25 bucks for this. This is a universal one. It's super easy to install. Comes with everything you need. And like I said, I only pay 25 bucks for it. And it's gonna do its job and serve a really good job. So these guys right here is how it mounts to one of the existing condensers or radiator. And all they do, they stick through the cooling fins come out through the back side and then it comes with these foam things so when it sits up against the condenser that I'm running it through it won't rattle or do something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this through all right I'm gonna kick that let me just show you what this looks like let's see if I can do this whoa about fell so on this back side, you can see where it's going to come through. Boom. It'll come all the way through. And then we have these guys that will clip on. Let's see if I can set my phone some way or another. And these guys. Just slide on there like so. It's kind of like a zip tie. And we just pull them tight. Wait, I got that backwards. Whoopsie. Let me do that again. My fault. There we go. There's one. Too. Just like a zip tie. <laughs> now I'm actually not going to cut these off until I get my lines ran. In case I do need to wiggle them around, I'm not going to pull them completely tight yet. Well, let's get these lines in. For the sake of time, whenever I went and bolted everything back up. Put the serpentine belt back on, bracket, uh, tighten down the tensioner, the pulley, and the pump. Y'all should know how to do all that and put it back together. Whatever. Got the return line ran from the cooler. And now, this cooler does come with a hose. And like I said, it is a universal but instead of the return line running back directly to the pump from the gearbox, we're going to run the return line through the cooler back to the pump. Uh, so let's get this guy installed. So, I was fighting that hose, getting it on the return line to the pump, like the return inlet, outlet, whatever you want to call it. That is a half inch outlet, so I had to make a reducer to this line, 
but the hose that I have is for a half inch, but the lip on that outlet was not allowing that hose to go on. So you know what I did? Fucking heated it up a little bit, not where it was burning or catching on fire, just enough where that uh, rubber hose would loosen up a little bit. As soon as I heated it up, pushed right on. So, little tip, little trick. <laughs> yeah! Victory. Y'all can see what I'm seeing. So, this is our return line. It goes up to the pump. And there's my reducer with my hose clamps. So that inlet right there that I'm going to is a half inch in size it goes down to the three eighths there's my adapter and then of course the ugly ass hose clamps but it works and then I'm running down to the cooler through here and then this is my pressure I mean my other return portion to the pump I'm into the gearbox. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's that I was. Uh, there we go. Yes, sir. Now we just gotta get a steering column hooked back up. I just gotta check and see which, what is straight, and then go from there. All right, we got our steering wheel straight. Got our gearbox oriented right to line everything back up. Now we're putting the pitman arm back on. All right, we're tightening down the pitman arm. Where's my hammer? There it is. As you're tightening down, you want to tap on the side of it. She's nice and tight. My system uses ATF fluid, not actual power steering fluid. Before I do that, I'll throw the condenser back in, the condenser pan, I mean. Short, so I gotta use my step stool. <laughs> When I start this, it's going to be really noisy to begin with until that fluid gets sucked down in there. So I'm going to start this thing up. Hold your ears. <laughs>
bubbles. And also while I'm doing that, it's sucking it back down and filling the system. So as it's doing that, I'm gonna keep adding and keep working it until the noise goes away and I'm not seeing any more air bubbles. on so I can build up more pressure. I'm going to double check the leaks. start it again and redo the whole process. let's recap everything we just did so I got the 99 gearbox that's antifreeze where I'm topping it off on the radiator but anyways I got the 99 uh, Durango snowplow edition gearbox and then I have an O2 Grand Cherokee pump with the universal exterior cooler for the power steering made a tremendous difference with the ease of going and moving the steering wheel pushing 37s bigger wheels and I just want to add that I do have upgraded steering arms this is the uh, the Beelies for Cherokee anyways recap on it to do this pump what I did you remove this fitting that comes off of it, that comes on it from the uh, factory or whatever, however you want to call it. But we remove that fitting, take the one from the old Cherokee pump, put it to this pump, and then we also reuse the same pulley off the Cherokee pump to the Grand Cherokee pump. So there's three inlets on this pump instead of there just being two on the Cherokee one. The inlet on the back side right here, you block off. There's going to be one at the bottom. That will be your return inlet. Your return inlet is right there. I can't really get up there to show you. But that inlet is a half inch inlet. The hoses that we have are 3 8 so I had to make an adapter from half inch to three eighths to run it to the cooler. The cooler comes with pretty much everything you need, extra hose, uh, and like I said before, it only costs 25 bucks, so why not? And this is everything from O'Reilly's. Uh, I went ahead and replaced the power steering lines. Both my power steering lines are from the Cherokee, uh, my model Cherokee. But like I said, we replace this inlet on the top. We go from the Cherokee one to the Grand Cherokee pump. We reuse the, pul the pulley and everything is bolt up and ready to go other than those two things and blocking off this inlet in the back. <coughs> Corona. <coughs> Not funny. <laughs> but super easy to install guys. Um, the only thing that took the longest was bleeding the system like I said it takes about 30 to 45 minutes just have patience with it 
working it back and forth. This is a higher output uh, pressure wise pump and that should be good for the bigger beefier uh, gearbox that I put on it as well. So again, 99 Snowplow Edition gearbox off of Durango and O2 Grand Cherokee power steering pump. Both of these are for V8 engines in both those vehicles and they are direct bolt up. So this is the cheaper way to fix issues with power steering and upgrade it as well. I cannot complain about this setup. Way cheaper than your PSC and other hydro assist, which is good and everything. I'm not bashing on them, but like when you're like me and you got a kid and other bills, like real life shit, you're not gonna be able to pay for something like that. This is the bang for the buck. I, I mean, I, I seriously have no, no complaints. I'm really digging this setup. So we're taking her out this weekend. We're gonna see how she does. Uh, I think we're going to Turkey Bay, which is land between the lakes in Kentucky. All I have left now is to pull this wheel spacer off, replace it, and I, I'm just running inch size wheel spacers to give me more clearance away from the leaf springs. But I'm gonna go through, grease all my joints, and do a little bit more of our overall look on the Jeep and probably uh, bring the forklift over and test out the articulation and see where I'm rubbing. But that's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, comment below uh, more content that you would like to see. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to reply and answer them. But you know what to do. Like, subscribe. Keep up with my channel. Keep up with me. I'm a pretty cool dude, I think. But I love you guys. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going wheeling. Peace out, guys.